Hi everyone. In this video we're going to do some examples of multiplace symbolization in predicate logic. Uh, we're just going to go through a handful of examples of varying degrees of difficulty that are meant to demonstrate some uh, solving techniques and tips and just to sort of get you familiar with the wide variety of questions that we can really answer now that we have operations equality as well as multiplace predicates at our fingertips. Okay, so here's the first question. Again, we're doing multiplace predicate symbolization with names, operations, and equality, or identity, so there's sort of lots to think about here. So this says, Tom's cousin's barber is the person who lives between Martin and Phil, but he's neither nice nor friendly. So it's pretty easy to see that we just have um, a couple big operations here, uh, the person who lives between Martha and Phil. And so here, this is is uh, equating two individuals together because each time you have an operation it picks out a single person so that's got to be equality. So Tom's cousin's barber, um, so the barber of Tom's cousin, so there's the barber, so I have the barber of the cousin of bracket Tom. Now this isn't ambiguous, the fact that I have A of A because this A is clearly A1, it has one place, this A is clearly A0, and this B is clearly B1 because this entire thing is just a single operation. That's one person. So how do I say is? That's equals. The person who lives between Martin and Phil. Martin is B. Phil is C. The person who lives between 1 and 2 is B2. So that's just B, B, C. Oh, how clever. Okay, so that's, that's this entire first thing. And then I have comma but. And we know that comma but is and. Now remember, some people would be tempted to put brackets here like this. You can't do that. That's a syntactical error. So don't do it. Uh, okay. So he's neither nice nor friendly. So who are we talking about? Well, he is actually either of these people. It doesn't really matter because they're the same person. So you could write BAA or BBC or you could just intermix them. It doesn't really matter. So to say neither nice nor friendly, we just go to our standard neither nor, which I'm going to use as the negation of or. So it's not the case that this thing is nice. Uh, a, A, or this thing is friendly. And so that's, I'll use the same B, A, A. But of course, you could have used B, B, C if you preferred. Now, the only uh, trick to this is I'm going to point out that some people would have put brackets around the internal thing, but that's wrong because N and F here, nice and friendly, they're one place predicates, and we never use brackets inside the one place predicate. Okay, so of course you could have done the um, sort of de Morgan's form of this. That's also okay. Uh, other, and you could have swapped the order of these things. That's also okay, as long as you have and as the main connective. Uh, there aren't too many sort of other interesting variants here. So this tests operations, identity, and, uh, you know, a lot of this is just testing bracket use. Okay, next question. Although no person likes Don... Don's dog likes everyone except for Martha. So uh, I have this comma, and of course we know this comma is paired with although, so most likely the main connective is just and here. Um, anyway, we could just start. No person likes Don, that's pretty straightforward. Don is an operation, or sorry, a name letter, D to the zero. So how do I say no person? Uh, well, you can say it in one of two ways. It's not the case that there is something that is a person, and likes Don. So we'll say likes uh, X likes D. You could have also said for anything, if it's a person, then uh, it's not the case that they like Don. These are equivalent. Okay. So from there, we say although, which is the and, Don's dog likes everyone except for Martha. So the trick here is you just need to know what the uh, group is. Whenever we have these exceptions, uh, you need to include the exception right into the group. So the group I want to define here is everyone except for Martha, and then the property is that Don's dog likes them. So this is just a straight group property. It's just uh, written in English in the reverse way. So how do I say everyone except for Martha? So everyone, whenever you have the word one, it's uh, a person that we're talking about. So everyone is going to be the case that um, for anything, if you're a person, and except for Martha, and x doesn't equal e, then you can say Don's dog likes you. So that's L is the liking relation, the dog of Don, dd, no big deal. 
and likes you. That's the X. Okay, so notice here uh, that I did use brackets here. And of course, you are supposed to do that because L is a two-place predicate. It's a multi-place predicate. So that's why I did it here, but I didn't do it in the previous question. There are other ways to phrase this. Um, this sort of everyone, Don's dog likes everyone except for Martha. Um, but uh, this is sort of probably the most natural way. Uh, okay, so yeah. I think that's all I need to say here. Oh, okay. You could rephrase or rewrite this X does not equal E into the other form of inequality, which is like so. So either of these would be fine, but you could not put brackets around the inequality or equality in this case, just like I explained in the previous question. You never put brackets around equality. Okay, on to the next. Dennis, who is the best teacher in Toronto, loves fast cars. So you should spot that here we have the non-restrictive clause, uh, and then I want to symbolize sort of the outside and the inside separately. Well, normally, I, in the past, I've always done the non-restrictive clause first, but it turns out that the outside, the remainder, is actually far easier. Dennis loves fast cars, so I'm actually just going to do that one first this time. So uh, what does it mean to love fast cars? Well, it actually means that Dennis doesn't just love uh, some fast car, he loves all the fast cars. So for anything, if you are fast and you are a car, then Dennis loves you. Okay, so nothing weird about that. And then I have the and. Now this and comes from the non-restrictive clause because the non-restrictive clause essentially separates uh, two things with a conjunction. So now I need to say, Dennis is the best teacher in Toronto. So if you want, you don't have to do this, but a lot of people will, you can just open a giant bracket now for the entire superlative. So this is a superlative because it's relating Dennis to everyone else uh, and saying Dennis is the best. It's like a perfect well ordering. So Dennis is the best teacher in Toronto. The first thing I suggest to do when you do a superlative is to state the things that we know. So first we know that Dennis is a teacher and Dennis is in Toronto. Uh, so we would say those immediately. So Dennis is a teacher and Dennis, <clears throat> um, uh, I guess this is uh, a bit ambiguous here. My symbolization scheme says lives in Toronto, um, but it doesn't make it explicit here. Let's just pretend it works out. So I'll say Dennis lives in Toronto, but of course I need brackets around this because it's multi-place. So now I have said that Dennis is a teacher. Dennis lives in Toronto. That's fine. And now I say the relational part. And just like the previous one, the previous question, the relational part is to uh, all with an exception. So what I'm going to say is for everything, if you're a teacher and you're in Toronto or live in Toronto, I guess, um, then I want to say that Dennis is better than you. But uh, instead, I have to make sure that Dennis isn't better than himself. So I add the exclusion and x isn't equal to Dennis. Then now I can say the final relation, uh, Dennis is better than you, which is B, Dennis is better than X. And so this has ensured that I haven't uh, said that Dennis is better than himself. So of course, just like before, you could write this negation X equals D, that's also fine. So this is the, a nice intuitive form of the superlative. Some of you may use the biconditional form of the superlative. I actually uh, used to teach that. I don't teach it anymore. It's fine if you use the biconditional form. You'll find it in the readings. But the reason why I don't teach it is because it's not as intuitive as just, as just stating the conditional form with the additional claims here that we know Dennis is a teacher, Dennis is in Toronto. Um, but it would be correct if you did it on a test. Okay, so that's no problem. Non-restrictive clause plus superlative. Our next question is our first look at quantities. So uh, Jim's wife doesn't like at least two flavors of ice cream offered at Baskin Robbins. Uh, so you could see that the property here is going to be something about Jim's wife not liking these things. Um, and, and the things themselves are actually two flavors of ice cream offered at Baskin Robbins. So you could see that I actually have to introduce uh, several subjects here. Um, and uh, in each case, say Jim's wife doesn't like them. So there's nothing hard about this question. It's just very repetitive. 
And you have to sort of realize that whenever you see quantity, it's going to be repetitive in nature. And this is really important when you do translation questions and stuff like that. Uh, the, the sort of quantity forms sort of just repeat themselves. And uh, I'll sort of talk about that later in this video and in my video for next week. <laughs> so uh, Jim's wife, I can just do that really easily. The wife of uh, Jim, that's A of A, no big deal. So whenever I see Jim's wife, I know it's A of A. Doesn't like, no problem. At least two flavors of ice cream. So the first thing I'm going to say is there is, well, actually, I'll just map it out. First, I'm going to say there is a flavor of ice cream offered at Baskin Robbins that Jim's wife doesn't like. How do I get at least two? Then I'll say, and there is a flavor of ice cream offered at Baskin Robbins that Jim's wife doesn't like. And this second flavor is not the same as the first. And that way we have at least two. So you just have sort of have to think very robotically and think that you need to uh, introduce each, each subject properly one at a time. So let's do it. There is something that is a flavor of ice cream and it is offered at Baskin Robbins. And it's not the case that Jim's wife likes it. Okay. So I'm going to leave the scope of this existential X open because I know I'm going to have to relate it to the second flavor. And I'll talk about uh, why sort of at, again at the end. So instead, I'll just say, and now I want to say there is a Y that is a flavor of ice cream. And Y is also offered at Baskin Robbins. And Jim's wife doesn't like Y. Uh, now... I have to cover the case that it could be possible that this X flavor and the Y flavor are the same, and I've just repeated myself. And the way to cover for that is to say, and X doesn't equal Y. So this means that my second flavor isn't my first, which means there are two flavors that uh, Jim's wife doesn't like. Now, have I captured at least two? Well, in fact, yes, I have, because I didn't say there isn't a third. Uh, so I didn't say exactly. Just by invoking the existentials, I said at least, and now I'm just going to close two brackets to make it well formed. The most common mistake here in a question like this is that when you have this x doesn't equal y, you have to be sure that it falls under the scope of both x and y. And so that's why I left the bracket open here. Lots of people will get the general form right, but then they'll just tag on x doesn't equal y at the end or outside of the brackets, and that doesn't work at all. You need it to be quantified for it to make sense that X is referring to this and Y is referring to this. Um, a couple other notes here. Some people, especially if you're math or in CS, will want to start by writing there exists X, there exists Y. In general, I've advised you not to do this, but it turns out in this question, it would work just fine. Uh, so in general, don't do this. Uh, but if you know, if you just have to for some reason, it would work in this case. Uh, the last thing to point out is some people might want to know how to make it exactly two. Well, to make it exactly two, um, I would just, I would leave these, these brackets open here, and then you would just add the clause, uh, for exactly two. You would say something like, and, uh, there doesn't exist a third flavor, a Z, that, uh, is a flavor ice cream that Jim's wife doesn't like, um, that is different than the other two. So you'd say, and Z doesn't equal X, and Z doesn't equal uh, Y, uh, or. So, um, so uh, this is, um, this is sort of one form, and you could do the uh, universal as well. There's a universal form of this. But don't worry about this exactly stuff. Uh, we'll do exactly properly when we get to another question.